Hello there. Wanted to uh, make a few videos. Um, a couple of just purely knife videos. Um, probably do a, a few different parts of uh, what's called uh, knives that I think every American should own. Now, uh, this doesn't mean um, that now these are just knives from my collection because that's all I can show you. Um, doesn't mean they're the greatest knives, but uh, they're all um, they're all be like uh, like classics. That uh, if you like knives and you collect them, you should you should own one. And um, they're all just uh, you know great great purposeful knives. Um, so as you can see, maybe I've got my uh, Buck knives hat on today. Um, I couldn't think of a, a better knife to um, start this little series out than the Buck Model 110 Folding Hunter. Came out in I think uh, 1964. Um, revolutionized the folding knife industry. Uh, I, I guess uh, perhaps it was the first lockback. Um, don't quote me on on that, uh, but definitely the I guess the first one that really uh, popularized um, the the uh, lockback hunter. Um, there's been uh, many imitators of this knife, all kinds of uh, you know cheap uh, Chinese and Pakistani knives that look just like this. Um, of course, uh, there there's some quality knife makers that make a similar knife. Well, I know um, Schrade made a a good knife uh, like this for many years. Um, uh, K Bar used to make them. They they still make uh, one, um, not made in in America anymore. Oh yeah, meant them to uh, say that. All the knives Amer in this series that an American must own, they they have to be made in America. That's one of the criteria. Uh, but uh, Buck One Ten, man, I just love this knife. It's, I mean, obviously knives have evolved a lot over the past uh, 55 years or so that um, this knife has been on the market um, but uh, it's got a three and three quarter inch clip point blade weighs about uh, seven ounces um, and it just works man buck makes it in their you know standard 420 HC that they make you know all their uh, general purpose knives in you can get it in um, upgraded steels like S30V. Um, it comes, uh, this is a diamond wood handle. Um, this knife is a couple, two, three years old. Um, now they make them all in ebony wood. Um, you probably get a bit of a darker, uh, darker coloring than uh, what's in this knife. Um, brass bolsters. Um, I have an aftermarket um, opening bar on this one. I uh, got that for Christmas. It's uh, it's pretty neat just to get it on some uh, one-handed opening, but uh, I mean, it's really just a great kind of, obviously it's the Buck 110 Folding Hunter, it's meant to be a hunting knife. Um, personally, I'm not a hunter yet, hopefully I want to change that, um, but I'm sure the who knows how many countless animals a buck 110 has processed over the past 50 some odd years. Um, the buck 110 can also, um, it, it, it's a slow opening knife, so uh, this, this version anyway, they have, buck also makes an automatic version. Um, if that's legal in your state, it is not in mine, so I do not own one. Uh, so they, they can also make a, with that uh, nice piercing clip point, you could also use this as a self-defense weapon. There is a story of a fella by the name of Gene Moe, who um, he's in uh, an Alaskan, and he was out deer hunting one day in November 1999 when he was um, you know, field dressing his deer. Big old Kodiak bear comes bearing out of the woods. Smelled that all the deer blood and guts and thought to... Uh, Mr. Mo looked uh, mighty tasty, and that bear came after Mo, and Mo defended himself against a Kodiak bear with his Buck 110 
folding hunter. Um, he had the version of the Buck 110 with the finger grooves, so maybe that uh, helped him get a little bit better grip for uh, going on and uh, fighting him, fighting um, that Kodiak bear off of him. Um, Mr. Mo was also 69 years old when that happened. Fighting off a Kodiak bear at 69 years old with nothing but a buck 110. He obviously had a rifle because he was out deer hunting, but it was out of reach when the bear charged at him, so he could not get to it. Now, Mr. Moe did not come away unscathed. He was very badly injured. Um, the bear got his, his arm ripped at the shreds and also got uh, the inside of his thigh. Um, he describes it as uh, you know, skin and muscle and all types of gore was hanging down from his thigh down to his calf. That, that bear sliced him open with those claws, but he repeatedly stabbed it um, right into the mouth um, and through the throat, gave him some nice left hooks into the nose, and uh, the bear died and is now a rug on Mr. Moe's floor. Um, so that's definitely probably the all-time best story of the Buck 110. Uh, and I just have this little stick I've just been screwing around with while I'm talking. Um, the Buck 110, I mentioned you can get it in uh, S30V steel. It comes in this pro version here with the S30V and black G10 liners instead of wood and nickel bolsters instead of uh, brass. Um, this model's been out for a uh, for a bit from Buck. Um, they also recently came out one with uh, the ebony scales and brass with S30V steel that they sell exclu exclusively on their website. They also have these slim lightweight versions. Um, the, uh, the blades modified a little bit um, than the, uh, the from on the classic as you can you can see there. Uh, the clip is much less pronounced on the slim version. Um, the Slim also comes in a pro version. I don't currently have one, uh, but they have micarta scales in a couple different colors and an S30V blade. Uh, but yeah, Buck 110. It's probably, you know, it's got to be one of the best selling knives of all time. I mean, these, they're just classic. They just work. Um, you can wear it. It comes with a belt sheath. I never wear mine on the belt sheath. I just carry it in my pocket. Um, it just works for me. Uh, there, there was a, a YouTube channel uh, called 1972 Woodsman. Uh, that's what it was called when he originally made his video. He had a great story about um, getting a, about the, his uh, uncle having a buck 110 knife. Um, and he just remembered that from his childhood and, and uh, his uncle eventually gave him that, that same knife. And uh, you know this the guy who runs that chain, who ran that channel uh, his name's Eric. He uh, he eventually, you know, he he was into the Buck 110 for a while. He doesn't uh, he doesn't really carry it as much anymore. But uh, he he had some great videos at, at one point on that channel. Um, and I want to give a shout out to uh, this man Eric. Uh, he he got off of YouTube for a while. Um, his old channel uh, had a few different names to it. Uh, it. He was 1972 Woodsman, and he changed it to. Um, Factotum journals at one point and then uh, something different entirely his, his channel shifted a bit more from kind of outdoorsy stuff to uh, he did a lot of skateboarding um, for a while which was which was neat but um, he, he took down his channel and was off YouTube for like a year but uh, he is back on now making some good videos under the channel name uh, coffee commando central uh, so if you want to uh, check out that channel and give him a, a subscribe. He does uh, a lot of neat videos, just kind of uh, doing some hikes and uh, just kind of shooting the breeze with uh, whoever's watching. And uh, he's, he's done a, kind of a lot of neat uh, lock picking videos um, recently, which is kind of a cool skill set to have. Uh, I've personally not uh, indulged myself in, in that yet, but. Um, he does he does um, other videos too. Um, he, he did one on how to use a lensatic compass uh, maybe a couple weeks ago. 
Uh, so check that out. Uh, Coffee Commando Central, I believe is the channel name. All right, and if you don't own a Buck 110 Hunter, go out and get yourself one. They're very affordable, especially for like the standard version in the 420HC. Probably sold it at every Walmart in America. $35, you will not find a better price outside of Walmart. Get yourself the Buck 110. It is a knife that every American should own.